The aircraft was, uh, as all Dreamliners, relatively new. It was delivered to Ethiopian Airways Airlines just at the end of 2012. Uh, Ethiopian was the first airline in Africa to fly the 787 Dreamliner and indeed was the first to return it to service after the there was a, flying was suspended as a result of the lithium-ion battery uh, problems. We don't know what happened here. All we know is that all of a sudden the fire brigade were called to this 787 and arrivals and departures were, were suspended at Heathrow Airport. I can tell you, looking at Flight Aware now, that there are indeed uh, pictures that the fl flights are now moving again. Takeoffs and landings have begun again. The airport will get back to get back to normal pretty quickly. It may be a Friday, but you know, an hour or so's delays here and there, and the investigation will begin. Boeing has put out a statement, Jonathan, saying that they do know about this incident. They are aware of this incident, and that Boeing staff in London at Heathrow are dealing with it and are on the ground. An important point in all this, maybe the most important point, nobody was hurt. Nobody was on board at the time, which makes us all the more mysterious. You know, we hear about all kinds of mishaps on aircraft, uh, and, they, and they take the black boxes and they find out exactly what the pilots were up to and exactly what the plane was up to. There were no pilots and the plane wasn't up to anything. How much of a mystery is this going to be, or are they simply going to be looking for um, burn marks on the carpet? Well, we can see burn marks on the roof, or some sort of scorching on the roof, uh, just uh, in front of the vertical stabilizer, at the front of the, of the fin there. And the, they'll find out what happened here. That's of no doubt whatsoever. The flight had arrived from Addis this morning. It was due to leave in the evening tonight to go back to Addis Ababa. The interestingly, of course, because of that, it was on the ground for many hours and it was parked away from the terminals. Um, which, of course, is why it's in the middle of nowhere, or, or at least not, not att att attached to any terminal at the moment. They will find out what's happened. The investigation will be underway. It will be conducted by the AAIB, the Air Accident Investigation Board, which is the UK's equivalent of the NTSB. Uh, Boeing will be accredited to the investigation. But here's the point, Jonathan. We don't know yet whether it was an extraneous item on the plane, whether the plane itself was involved in the fire, we just don't know. An airliner hijacked by the plane's own co-pilot and then diverted to this runway in Geneva. Swiss police scrambled to react this morning when this Ethiopian airline scheduled flight from Addis Ababa to Rome was diverted here. Flying over Italy, the co-pilot had waited for the pilot to go to the toilet, then he locked himself inside the cockpit and alerted air traffic control to what he was doing. This is the actual cockpit recording. Uh, do you know if we'll get the asylum uh, in time? We need asylum or assurance that we will not be transferred to the Ethiopian government. Okay, we are waiting on that uh, information. Kilo Kilo 001, you may hold the present position. Uh, kilo Kilo 001, uh, I'll be com uh, coming out by the window. Through the open cockpit window, the hijacker let himself down with a rope, then gave himself up to the Swiss authorities. Around 200 passengers and crew left the plane unharmed. Then the Swiss convened a hasty press conference. Le copilote pirate est né en 1983. The co-pilot hijacker was born in 1983. He's of Ethiopian origin. His act was motivated by his claim that his safety is threatened in his country, and he wants to seek asylum in Switzerland. Ethiopian airlines say no weapons were involved and no one was in danger. But just why the hijacker didn't wait to disembark in Rome is not clear. He now faces the prospect of up to 20 years in a Swiss jail. Frank Gardner, BBC News.